So now I've finished the scraping on this machine. The scraping of the bed, flats, dovetails, and also the saddle and cross slide. To within specs, which I try to hold uh, as I've learned, um, four tenths over a uh, foot, that means uh, one hundredth of a millimeter over thirty centimeters. And then I try to halve that as a production tolerance. I'm testing the saddle, the flats on the saddle. Just it's beginning to look good. And I promise you it wasn't looking that good from the start. So then when I tested this flat, I will do the dovetail. And then I have done the saddle. Uh, sorry, the cross slide. So I'll test the saddle ways with the cross slide ways here. Uh, as well as, of course, uh, just measuring on the table that these are flat. Uh, with parallels on the um, granite and then measuring to these uh, surfaces here from here or I can have it here and just test it of course with the indicators and then I will blue it up with um, with a straight edge first before I do the cross slide. So now I've finished with the gib also, uh, scraping that. I could have, uh, uh, instead of scraping it all down, I could have uh, bent it a little bit first, but since this is not a triangular gib, uh, I mean, one that would become uh, prone to be uh, too thin when scraped too much or scraped at least that happens uh, this piece of just a uh, flat gib is not prone to that so then i just opted to scrape it instead anyway now this is now functional as for setting up i think this is a little bit too tight or as you don't see any movement at all, I can still move it, although a bit like uh, too much friction, I think. And there's hardly any movement. I mean, that's a little bit too tight. So better would be like having just a little less tightness here. little bit more movement of course you want to be able to move it slide it without any tight spots and to not too much force and still have no play or minimal play
And the way I'm testing this is to blow up here. Lift that carefully onto the surface. Put it down and slide it back and forth. I've done that already so you can see the blue markings. Of course, uh, now I've worked on this a while, so it's starting to be decent, at least lengthwise coverage, but far too, too uh, little POP and PPI, but at least POP, you see, uh, the markings, all now present all the way, are too small and too far apart. So I have uh, a way to go. And uh, at this point, of course, I can also then use the straight edge. Um, but at least this here gives me uh, the possibility, of course, to retain both surfaces plane parallel. And of course, having already established that all corners are equally to the equal to the bed. The use of a highlighter can be beneficial, at least in the later stages. So you're able to see the, the scraping better then. Far from perfect. But improving at least. You see there, I have an edge on the, actually by intent. Uh, the difference here is uh, yeah, two thousandths of a millimeter, that is One ten thousandths of an inch, maybe two. Testing parallelism between the two dovetails, normally then with pins here and here uh, in the dovetails and then measuring three times like this. Now I just wanted to show you an alternative method using this jig which is uh, comprised of uh, two uh, semicircles here and then I just put a pin underneath here. So I'll just move this along the ways here. I see that I'm within half a thou or one hundredth of a millimeter, maybe you say plus minus um, two ten thousandths of an inch. So initial bluing up of the gib for the cross slide. Uh, although this might be okay. I mean, if you imagine that it's going to be pushed in, also in the middle, thereby maybe mitigating this error or eliminating this error. But you don't know. I mean, so the only way is to scrape down here or try to bend it flat again. Uh, I'm not too worried about this being too thin. So I think I'll scrape it.